I just made a $15,000 investment, bringing my total portfolio value to nearly $70,000. In this video, I want to tell you guys what I bought, why I bought it, as well as a major reorganization. I'm thinking about implementing my portfolio in the very near future. So let's get right into this. So we can see right here, the deposit in question was made on August 7th, a value of $15,000. And the next day, August 8th, it all went into ticker SHV, which is an iShares short-term treasury bond ETF that holds treasuries from one month to 12 months in duration. So being that this is a short treasury ETF, there's essentially no volatility and it very closely follows the federal funds rate. So the share price is 110 and the most recent payment was almost 50 cents per share. So why did I buy a bond ETF? Well, I've been hesitant to dump money into this market as it's been racing up in price, causing me to have this backlog of cash that should be invested. This money was sitting in a high yield savings account, but I decided to put it in my portfolio, invest in the treasury bonds myself and get that 5.1% dividend yield. But long term, this is not my strategy. I'm still waiting for a market pullback to sell SHV and deploy it into my equity holdings. And so far, this has worked out extremely well because August 7th was right around here. And since then, the market has began to become a little bit cheaper. And if we take a look at the fear and greed index, we are finally beginning to move into the, the fear side of the spectrum. Stock prices are still very close to their all time high, but other metrics like the options volume as well as market volatility are beginning to move in the right direction if you want cheaper buying opportunities. But I want to reiterate that this is not my long-term strategy. I am simply parking money short-term in SHV. It can be very tempting to leave money in a bond fund like this because the volatility is so low and the yield is so high. In many cases, it's higher than my dividend funds like SHD, which has a yield of, I think, 3.5% right now. But you have to remember to look at the big picture and long-term, due to the price appreciation ability of equity funds, the outperformance is going to be immense. I know a lot of investors are keeping money in funds like SHV until the Fed cuts rates, at which point the plan is to pivot, sell the bonds, buy equities. But my opinion here is if you wait until the Fed cuts rates and everything is obvious, it's going to be way too late. And equity prices on the mere rumors of rate cuts are going to race up in value. So personally, I'm making that pivot a lot sooner than most other investors, taking advantage of the uncertainty, the fear, and those cheaper prices. All right, now moving on, I am considering uh, slightly reorganizing this portfolio. Aside from SHV, I'm talking long-term structural differences. So you guys know right now I'm invested in the S&P 500 my dividend assets, and my growth assets. If we click into the growth side of the portfolio, this is consisting of VGT and BST. And I think this is the weakest area of my portfolio, even though I've made a lot of money here. So VGT, I bought this fund, I think in November of 2022. So essentially at the bottom, and I've written it all the way up. But I don't think that's a good indicator deciding whether or not to invest in a fund simply because you've made or lost money in it. And I think the big problem here is that none of these funds are traditional broad market growth funds that look at metrics like EPS growth, revenue growth. These are dedicated tech funds. And of course, there's a lot of overlap between tech and growth, but they're not necessarily the same exact thing. So to illustrate this point with VGT, if we read the product summary, this seeks to track the performance of a benchmark index that measures the investment return of stocks in the information technology sector. That's the only criteria. Now, on the other hand, we have a name like SCHG. This is the Schwab US Large Cap Growth ETF. And the objective here is to track, before fees and expenses, the total return of the Dow Jones US Large Cap Growth Total Stock Market Index. And for this index, the term growth is defined by the following six measures. The projected price to earnings ratio, the projected earnings growth, the price to book ratio, the dividend yield, trailing revenue growth, and trailing earnings growth. So it's not just technology stocks, it's companies that meet this growth criteria. Now, most of the fund, of course, still is technology, 45%, but we have more diversification in other sectors like healthcare and communications. In terms of the top 10 holdings, we have a lot of technology names, but also 
other companies, you know, Health Group, Eli Lilly, both of which are excellent high quality companies. And these unfortunately are not in funds like VGT. Now side by side, VGT has actually outperformed SCHG, but I don't think simply picking the line that goes up to the right the most is a good investment strategy. I really like the selection methodology of SCHG, the fact that it's diversified across many sectors, and there's no guarantee that the information technology sector will continue to outperform like it's done in the recent past. So using Portfolio Visualizer, I have been experimenting with different portfolio configurations, seeing how diversified they are, the respective performance. And the first thing to point out here is the amazing combination that is SCHD and SCHG. This essentially takes the S&P 500 and splits it into dividend growth companies and high earnings growth companies. And if we compare the performance of the S&P against a 50-50 split of these two names, these actually come out on top represented in the blue line by a pretty significant margin. And they do this while still giving you exposure to essentially all the companies in the S&P 500. And I've landed on a portfolio configuration like this as one of my top choices. So the first thing to note here is that it's very simple, four ETFs, all with equal weighting. The core is that combination of SCHG and SCHD, which splits the SP500 into a value and a growth half. And then I'm augmenting this with two of my other favorite funds, Divo, which gives me exposure to covered calls, and IXN, which gives me exposure to some of those international technology companies. And going all the way back to 2017, this is the relative performance of this portfolio against the S&P 500 in red. It does ultimately have a performance of about $5,000, beginning with a balance of 10,000 back in 2017. But even aside from that, I do like how it closely follows the price movements in both directions of the broader market. What I don't wanna see is weird bubbles forming followed by harsh corrections. I like that it follows the same general direction as the market, just with slightly better performance, as well as higher income generation. Yeah, so let me know in the comments, what do you guys think of this portfolio setup and would you change anything about it? But if I can't think of any better portfolio setup, I will be implementing this in my own portfolio and deploying that $15,000 I have currently in SHV into these names. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.